is Kumire Kaiya. I am 33. I am the founding director of Girls and Women Empowerment Network Trust, a community-based organization that works with vulnerable girls and women in Chitungweza. We hope to be national, but currently we are working in Seke Rural, uh, Zengeza, in part of Mundo. My passion for working with girls and women dates back uh, since I was a child. I was raised by a widow. My father passed away when I was in grade five. Uh, I think being a girl, being raised by a single parent with all the harsh economic challenges that came with uh, life. My mother was a vendor, so I was raised selling tomatoes, onions and stuff uh, by the roadside. So as I was growing up, I just felt I wanted to change my life. But in changing my life, I also realized that I needed to change the lives of the people around me. In 2015, I decided to register to become a legal organization. So we are a legal organization, we are registered. We are managed by a board of trustees. And that's how I became to be here today. And now we are working with girls and women full time. We break down our activities depending on the age range of the people that we are engaging at that time. We are currently working with a team of uh, four volunteers, uh, two young women and uh, two adult women who are offering their services for free to just ensure that these girls and women that we are hoping to support get all the support and the space they need. The girls that we are working with uh, at Gwen are facing different challenges. But um, I think the biggest challenge currently is the issue of water. There hasn't been access to take water for quite some time now. And this has exposed girls and women to many forms of gender-based violence, either in the public sources of water or other alternative sources of water, like the unprotected wells that they go to and other pits that have turned to wells. Their search for water, the girls and women uh, come across men who are violent, uh, there are men who are selling water for commercial purposes and you discover that we, we are taming them uh, water barons. They are found in almost all public bowls and they harass women, they push around girls. Girls and women have to queue for water for hours and at times these water barons are there getting water for resale. So girls end up having to exchange hugs, kisses for a bucket of water. At times they need 25 cents, 50 cents to buy water, which is very difficult to, in a situation where someone cannot raise a dollar for sustenance for a day. The girls are also being beaten at these water sources. They end up having to go and fetch water in unprotected wells that are contaminated by sewer, where they compete for this water with other dogs and other animals. And I believe some of our girls actually have solutions to the situations and problems that we are facing in Zimbabwe, but they do not have the opportunities. We need to give these girls from poor backgrounds an opportunity and resources so that they can explore their mind and bring out solutions. Maybe even solution to the water crisis that we have can come from some of these girls. Maybe we can even have apps where some of these girls can share information and advice with other girls. So I believe given these opportunities, the girls can excel and can do a lot more for their peers out there. the stories visit our website www.263chat.com follow us on twitter at 263chat and like our facebook page 263chat